How to Write in Second Grade, Volume 3 of 7 A Narrative Describe a Special Person This third writing piece will continue your work on narratives. In your first piece, you described a place. In the second piece, you provided lots of descriptive details about an object. You painted a picture with words to make it easy for your readers to know the object through their senses. This third piece will continue your work on narratives, but you're going to focus on gathering descriptive details about a person. We want to do a better job describing the characters in our stories. Describing a person is a lot like describing a place and a thing. We see what they look like. He has brown hair. We hear his loud voice. We feel the soft skin on her arm. We smell her sweet perfume. We can even taste if we lick the salty sweat on his arm. Yuck. But it's also possible to describe things about people that we can't detect with our senses. My brother is funny. My mom is smart. My sister is athletic. Descriptions about people that don't rely on our senses are called traits. If we can't describe them using our senses, we have to explain and give examples. An explanation is saying the same thing but using different words. My brother is funny. He makes me laugh a lot. Everyone can see that my brother has brown hair, but how do they know he is funny? I describe my brother by saying he is funny and then talk about the behavior that explains why I think so. My mom is smart. She knows all the answers for my homework. My sister is athletic. She plays on lots of sports teams. Traits are a way to draw a real-life picture using explanations to make your stories better. The goal in this writing assignment is to describe a member of your family. You'll give a physical description using details about their face and hair and about the clothes they wear. This part will be like the first two stories you wrote. In the second part, you will describe your special family member with traits and explanations. Take five minutes to draw a stick figure picture of your family. Usually this includes all of the people living in your house. Sometimes people include step-parents, step-siblings, and grandparents. Only take five minutes. Look at your family picture. Choose one of the family members that you can write about. This person is not your favorite member of the family, but it's someone you know well and could describe. Take a piece of the special family member template. Find descriptive details for the section on face and hair and for the section on clothes they wear. Remember, these are adjective noun pairs. Use a painted picture worksheet to generate adjective noun pairs. Then transfer them to your Describe a Family worksheet. Look at the bottom of your special family member template. Remember, a trait is something that describes the behavior of your special person. In life, it's easy to remember people's behaviors. My grandma ties my shoe. My brother makes me laugh. My sister plays a lot of sports. Finding the word or trait to go with this behavior can be hard, so start by finding a behavior or an action done by your family member that you think could help describe your family member to others. Remember, explain means to say it again but using different words. 
Look at the behavior you chose. Decide on a word that best represents this behavior. That's the trait. Sometimes you can choose from a list of traits hanging in your classroom. Last time, you completed a special family member worksheet. You generated adjective noun pairs to physically describe your special person. You then chose a behavior that describes your special person. And you chose a trait. Take a piece of the class writing paper. Write your name and today's date. In the section for writing skills, put 7 to 10 adjective noun pairs. On the second line, write behavior and trait. And on the third line, write beginning and ending punctuation. These are the skills we'll use to assess your work. The first sentence or sentences of your story needs to tell your reader what you're doing. You need to tell them that you're going to be describing a special family member. Say the sentence in your head before you write it down. A younger writer might use one sentence. An older writer could use two or three sentences to say the same thing. One clever way to keep your reader interested is to tell them you're going to describe a special person but don't tell them who that person is until the very end of your writing assignment. You did this with your mystery object. Write the first sentences for your story. Now use the adjective noun pairs in the face and hair and the clothes they wear section to write four or five sentences describing your special person. Remember to say the sentence in your head before you write it down. Don't list all of the details in one sentence. Your reader won't be able to really listen to a long list. Instead, write sentences that use one or two details. Notice when I put two details in one sentence, they're related. She has blue eyes and tortoiseshell glasses. Both talk about her eyes. Now you'll write sentences for the behavior action section. It might be one sentence or it could be two. Then finish with a sentence for the trait. Some people write a sentence for the trait and then give two or three sentences explaining it by talking about the behavior or action. It's backwards from the way you filled out your worksheet, but some people think it sounds better when it's written out this way. The last sentence or sentences has to signal to your reader that you're done. A younger writer might do this in one sentence. An older writer might use two or three sentences and it would look like this. Now read your story to yourself. Does it make sense? Does each sentence sound right? If a sentence doesn't sound right, fix it. Look at the top of your paper where you wrote down the writing skills you were going to include in your paper. Did you use seven to 10 adjective noun pairs? Count them. Did you write about a behavior and a trait? Did you begin each sentence with a capital letter and finish with the right ending mark? Good job!